Welcome to Jazzdime. Jazzdime.com is an online store that buys, sells, trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so our customers can easily choose the best watch for themselves in the comfort of their own home. If you like this watch and would like to purchase it at the lowest price anywhere online, click on the link in the description below to buy it at Jazzdime.com. Today, I'm going to be reviewing, reviewing the Rolex Cosmograph Daytona in stainless steel with a white dial, also known as the Panda reference 126500LN. It's a 2023 release, new release, and I'm going to talk to you first about the history of the Daytona, then talk to you about where this watch stands in the lineup of other Daytonas, then talk to you about the case, bezel dial, bracelet movement, finally try it on and give you my thoughts. So let's start with the history. The Rolex Cosmograph Daytona has been around for a long time. I want to say something like 50 years. And when Rolex was trying to figure out what to name their chronograph after, which is their most complicated sports watch, they were deciding between European races, such as the Le Mans, or the Daytona, which is an American uh, uh, car race. And they decided on the Daytona because America at the time, and still is, was their biggest market, and they wanted to name it after a race that Americans, their biggest market, would recognize, and hence the name Daytona came. Now, the um, Daytona has gone through many different iterations throughout its 50 plus year lifespan, but it's always maintained its chronograph. And when I say iteration, I mean different bezel, different material, different dials, this kind of thing just small variations but the thing one thing that's maintained the same is that it's always been a chronograph the pushers have always been on the right they've always had these three sub dials and i believe it should always been 40 millimeter um, the older ones maybe they were a little smaller i gotta check on that but at any rate all the modern ones let's say in the last 30 years have all been 40 millimeters okay so that's a little bit about the history now let's talk about the where this watch stands in the lineup. Uh, uh, so let's first start with this. Rolex makes two categories of watches, dress watches and professional watches. The professional watches, AKA are sports watches. They include the Daytona that you see here, Submariner, the, the Explorer, Yachtmaster, Sea Dweller, Deep Sea, etc. cetera, Explore, Explorer and a lot of and many others. And they come in many different variations. What you see in front of you here is the Daytona, which is the most complicated sports watch or professional watch as Rolex likes to call it, that Rolex makes. And it has a chronograph which calculates elapsed time. Now, of the Daytonas, Rolex makes, again, many different variations with different materials, gold, steel, yellow gold, rose gold, white gold, and they make different bezel combinations and different bracelet combinations. So they, in fact, the Daytona has more combinations or variations than any other sports watch that they make. And in fact, it is their most prestigious line. And I'll tell you about that in a little bit when we get into the details of it, okay? So, and this watch that you see in front of you is the stainless steel version. Rolex has traditionally only made two variations of the stainless steel, either white or black, nothing else. Whereas in other uh, materials, they make many different dial configurations, but in stainless steel, they only made two. So therefore, it makes the stainless steel the most coveted and the, and the watch that sells on the secondary market or the gray market for the most above retail, considering uh, if you, when you look at it ratio wise, what do I mean by that? Well, this watch retails at, as of 2024 for around $15,000 US dollars, but it goes on the secondary market, double that more than double that actually in the low thirties, mid thirties, something like that. Okay. So, and there's no other Rolex that does that except the stainless steel Daytona. Other watches have a higher uh, this is, so this is like 15k above retail. Other watches have more than 15k above retail, such as some of the special gemstone set watches, but none of them have a double retail um, like the stainless steel. Actually, you know what? Maybe the Rainbow Daytona has double retail. So I have to, I might have to take that back. I'm not sure about that. But it for for watches that are on the catalog of Rolex.com, 
the stainless steel Daytona is the only watch that goes double plus double, uh, two times retail. Okay, with that said, it's very difficult to get them, and uh, you, you pretty much can only buy them on the secondary market. So that's probably why you're watching this video, because you're thinking about getting one. So for your information, if you'd like to buy one, you can simply click on the link in the description below, and you can buy it from me, which is why I'm making this video, so that you'll buy it from us at jazztime.com. Because it's very difficult to buy this watch from the authorized dealer. You probably need to spend several hundred thousand dollars with before you will even be eligible for one and that could take years or you could simply click on the link in the description below pay the market price wire us and you'll have it tomorrow okay anyways so that's where this watch stands in the lineup now let me talk to you let's go ahead and now start talk, talking about the case the case is 40 millimeter case it's an oyster case which is a smooth streamlined small thin case that's unlike other professional lines in that it doesn't have these squared uh, uh, edges. It has streamlined edges. And I think that the reason Rolex does this is because the Daytona is, is supposed to be a uh, racing watch. And the only other watch, sports watch, that has this streamlined, smooth, sleek edge is the Yacht Master, which is also a racing watch. It's a yacht racing watch, but it's a racing watch nonetheless. And on the, all the other sports watches, they don't do this. Okay, now the case is 40 millimeters. In case you are wondering and, and asking, well, do they make a Daytona in any other size? No, they don't. They only make it in 40. There's no 41, 42, 43, like they do in other references. But I think the 40 millimeters really does great on the Rolex da uh, Daytona. And I don't think that they're gonna change that ever. And as you see, when I try this on, it fits actually perfectly. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about, oh, by the way, it's 40 millimeters, but when you add on, that's 40 millimeters from my thumb to my index finger, the eight o'clock to the two o'clock position, longest distance across the bezel in the case, but that does not actually include the pusher. So if you include the pushers, that makes the watch quite a bit bigger. I think like maybe 45 millimeters, but that's going from this uh, uh, nine to three position. The pushers make it look bigger and it makes it look more sporty. So you might, th if, you th if you thought 40 millimeters is small, well, the pushers actually make it look bigger. Okay, now let's move on to the bezel. Now, I told you at the beginning of this video, this watch is a new reference. The old reference that this reference replaces is 116500LN. And I told you I was gonna tell you some of the differences. I'm telling them to you now. The difference is, good thing I have another one of these um, I can show you, is that the bezel on the new reference is not made of all ceramic. Just the insert itself is made of ceramic. The insert, okay? The bezel, the part that holds the insert is made of steel which i think looks great it actually makes the watch look much more like the vintage reference i'm going to say the reference one six five uh, i think it's a one six five actually i don't know once oh it's one six five two zero that's right that reference was made in the 90s and the dial looks very similar to this and so does the bezel it, it looks just a little bit more similar to this Actually, it even looks older than that. It looks like some of the older vintage ones from the 70s, the bezel does, in that it has a bezel and then it has an insert. The insert is this black part in ceramic. Now, on the older version, the entire bezel and the insert was a huge chunk of ceramic. And if you ask me, it did not look as good. The bezel being so thick and bulky did not look as nice as... Um, what it looks like now okay so that's a major difference between the old bezel and the new bezel and that's another reason why to buy the newer version okay all right now let's move on to the dial here now at first glance you might think that the two dials are the same the old and the new but they're not and i'm going to t show you what part is not the, if you look at the hour markers on the older version they're short and fat on the newer version which is what you see here it's long and skinny 
And that makes the watch look much more streamlined again. And that actually looks like the old version. When Rolex first released this style looking watch, reference 16520, it looked it had a dial that looked like this. And it's it's going back to a more vintage look. That skinny hour marker with uh also by the way, skinnier subdials. The subdials themselves, the subdials are these little circle things at three, six, and nine. They're skinnier. Now the size of it's not any different. Okay, the size of the circle isn't any different, but the black ring that goes around it, that goes around the white part, is thinner. And that makes sense because they made the hour markers thinner and therefore the subdial tracks also need to be thinner to match it. Now, some people call this dial the panda dial, and that's because it has this white on the background with black subdials, kind of like a panda. Panda has white, and they, they have black surrounding the eyes sometimes, or black surrounding some part of the face. So they gave it a name, they call it panda. That's not a name that Rolex made, it's just that a name that some people use to describe it, just like they use the word to describe Batman, Pepsi, Ruby, or so on and so forth. Okay, so they, they some people have called this the panda. Okay, well, that's the dial. Now, if you ask me, I really think that the dial looks better like this. I like it with this thinner hour marker, thinner subdial. It just makes the watch look much more vintage and streamlined. And just overall, to me, it looks a little bit cleaner. I like it. Before, it looked a little bit too bulky, if I'm being honest. Okay, now let's move on to the bracelet. The bracelet is not really changed from this generation or the last generation or even the generation before that. <coughs> the bracelet is your standard oyster bracelet. They don't make the stainless steel in any other bracelet. It's not like you can choose between a Jubilee and a Oyster Flex. So you only have this option, which is oyster. But it's not a bad thing because the oyster is their most sporty bracelet. It has flat three-piece links across, and it even comes with a safety lock fold-over clasp that has an easy link five millimeter comfort extension, which allows you to change the size of the bracelet five millimeters when your hand gets hot or cold or in a humid or not humid situation. So you don't need to use tools to change the strap or the bracelet. And Rolex has really done probably the best job when it comes to uh, adjusting the bracelet without tools. There's five millimeters. Okay, that's the bracelet. Now let's move on to the to the movement here. Now the movement, you cannot see it, it's hidden, but in the most expensive version of this, which is the platinum version, you can actually see the, the beautiful movement. And I've seen it, so it looks different from the older movement. This movement is a 4131 caliber and it has a better finish at least in my opinion than the older version which was a 4130 the older version had very traditional looking finish to it which is not a bad thing but the newer version has a much more modern finish to it and in my opinion it looks better it also has a higher power reserve of 72 hours and it's more precise at plus minus two seconds a day so it's a fantastic movement that's another reason. So there's three reasons to get the newer version. One, the dial change, the bezel change, and three, the movement change. That's, for me, enough. I mean, there's only so many parts to the watch anyways. And the bracelet, they really couldn't do any better, so they didn't. Which, it's actually already perfect, so I'm not sure what they could do. Okay, maybe instead of uh, one extension, maybe they could have done two, who knows. Okay, anyways, so it's time to try it on. Now, I'm six foot tall, 200 pounds, and I have a 7.5 inch wrist. And as you can see, the watch really does look fantastic on me, and it would look great on you as well. And it doesn't look too small to you. I don't think so. You can see the head, and you can see about 20, 30% of the bracelet. And that makes the watch look very balanced. Now, I don't think it looks great when there's too much of the watch head or too much of the bracelet. It has to be a balance. I think a good balance is somewhere between uh, 80% head or maybe even um, somewhere between let's say 60 and 90% of the head that is what you can see that's a good balance and I think Rolex is not going to change the size ever they, they already nailed the size perfectly and 
to me, the Daytona is my favorite uh, Rolex of all. And it's because it's the most complicated, it's the most beautiful, it's the most sought after, it holds the best value, the list goes on. And then, and of those, I uh, really like this, the the stainless steel, I like the platinum better, but the platinum is also 100,000, this one is in the 30s. But at any rate, I really like the stainless steel, and if I had to choose between the white and the black, I would definitely go with the white because I think it's, uh, it's a, just a nicer looking dial. But anyways, if you'd like to buy this watch, click on the link in the description below to buy it at jazzdime.com. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount, so you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in Jazztime plus the brand, model and the details you're interested in and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.